Hmm, I think this should work. Nice! Looking cool! I gotta show this to Cybermare! Cybermare! Can you check my newest page for the Love website, please? Cybermare, please! I need a second opinion! Cybermare! I am before you really like it! It has page about you! Cybermare? Can I have second opinion, please? I wanna know what you think! Whoa! No, 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 no! Uh, what? Hey, what's up? Why are you crying? It just... this. YouTube shorts? I mean, yeah, I know that sort of stuff is cringe, but they're weirdly grabbing, I guess. That's the problem! You don't even like that stuff, and yet it's hypnotizing you into always watching more and more! It hurts to see my friend turning into a zombie. Yeah, I get what you mean. There's probably a Firefox extension that blocks YouTube Shorts anyway. I should get that. It's not just YouTube Shorts that's the problem. It's all social media. Other sites like Twitter and TikTok are designed to make you scroll forever. They are made to turn peeps into addicts. I don't like it. The internet is... The internet is bad now! Wait, what? Aren't you always the first person to shill how the internet's perfect and has no flaws and sh- The internet was perfect. But very slowly over time, it changed. Oh, so it's like a ship of Theseus situation? I've never heard that ship name before. Is it like a popular OTP from a show or something? Uh, forget I mentioned that. So you're saying the internet used to be different? I'll explain, but let me get in a more comfortable and iconic position first. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, the internet was this cool new thing, an infinite space of possibilities. But as time went on, certain websites took more and more traffic. So much traffic that they became an entire planet on their own. They became so massive that they were impossible to ignore. They gained complete dominance on the internet. This huge group of planets is what's called the Core Web. Oh, so the monopolistic normie conglomerate. Got it. As much as the Core Web liked to have all the attention on itself, the infinite space around the Core Web still exists. It's called the Peripheral Web. If you've grown tired of the core web like me, this, right here, is where to look for new websites and experiences. There's a whole movement going on right now about bringing back how fun the old internet used to be. This movement and everything around it goes by many names, and researching was confusing, so let's clarify some stuff. Old web is referring to the old internet between the 90s and 2000s, back when the internet was more wild, diverse, and independent. I don't know if you can call that environment diverse. It was just nerdy white dudes rich enough to afford the first wave of home computers. Especially since they weren't required for anything important. Yeah, prices and the lack of spread to everyone else made it so it was a much more niche community. But we don't have that problem anymore! The internet is now used by all kinds of peeps all over the globe! It's the perfect time to teach everyone how cool the old web was! Web revival is the name of the movement to make the internet a healthier place through making your own website, spreading awareness of the dangers of the social media platforms, and reducing your engagement in the core web! The personal web, also known as the independent web, is part of the peripheral web that the web revival wants to bring back into attention. Because technically, the peripheral web is everything that's not the core web, aka billions of websites. Anyway, the personal web is where all the cool and epic websites are. Here's an example. Blamow. What? <laughs> are you sure this is a website from today and not something you dug up from decades ago? You're not going to convince anyone to join your nostalgia bait movement with this. You just gotta accept there's no way out of the hellhole that is the modern internet. Grr. FYI, it's not gonna be thanks to grumpy peeps like you if things ever changes. Do you not see the soul in this website? Or in this one? Or this one? All these? Do you not realize the absolute freedom you have when you make your own website? This isn't about nostalgia. It's about bringing back the freedom and originality of the old web with the accessibility of the new web. Do you prefer all those original and experimental websites or having like five social medias that all look the same? Every website that's part of the core web is copying each other now. DeviantArt? Redesigned with all its unique flavor gone. And Tumblr slowly changed to look more and more like Twitter. It even has a For You page? Why does everything gotta have an algorithm to the spoon feeder? Ugh! You have TikTok figuring out how to hypnotize its users, and now every big social media wants a piece of that cake! Holy f**k, I've never seen you like this before. 
What a breath of fresh air. At least websites made things to the web revival movement are made by people with the heart and love of a human being. Not even social media users are human anymore. All I see on Twitter now is brands trying to pretend they're your friend. Daily reminder that literally everything brand accounts do on social media is meant to turn you into their customer. The web is now run by brands and algorithms. It's lost its soul, its humanity. I am not nostalgic. I am outraged. Damn, Manon being based. Never thought I'd see it happen. Isn't making our website, like, really hard, though? I feel like it's not gonna appeal to everyone, especially since it costs money to host one. Actually, now would be the perfect opportunity to get sponsored by that website maker. You know, Squarespace? No, no, no. Website makers like those are super limited, and you won't make anything unique. Learning HTML is actually easy and accessible nowadays, and NeoCities is the perfect place to hold your website! The Love website itself is all made with HTML and CSS, and is also hosted on NeoCities. No website maker involved! NeoCities also has a lot of awesome content on it. I invite everyone to browse the websites hosted on it. You don't even have to learn to code and make a website to participate in the web revival movement. You can either be an epic HTML magician creating fantastical websites, or a cool cowgirl boy exploring the wild west that is the personal web. Yeah, I think being a cowgirl is more my vibe than being a f***ing nerd. Browsing the personal web is pretty different from the core web, though. For example, you can see that a website is part of a web ring, which is a collective of websites all linked together like a ring. Personal websites also tend to have a links page, where the owner is going to link a bunch of websites that they like. There are some search engines to browse all those websites, but the fun of the personal web is getting lost in the, well, the web. It's gonna be overwhelming at first to be caught in the web, but it's so exciting to discover cool websites like that. A lot better than having an algorithm spoon feed you content. Okay, I see what you mean, and it sounds Kino and all, but you're not gonna get the core web BTFO just by having a couple hundred people create their own website. Come on, you're just being grumpy again. No, I'm being serious. The internet isn't gonna fix itself with this movement. It might provide some escapism for some people, but it isn't some magical other dimension. It exists within the confines of the human world, so it's governed by that world's systems. You know, capitalism. Rich people try to monopolize every industry. Now they're doing it to everyone's internet activity, trying to rule over it so they can make as much money from it as they can. The internet's just a recent, prominent victim. If you want the internet to decentralize, be accessible to everyone, and not be defined by monopolies and big corpos, that's only going to be possible in a world without capitalism. Or at least a world where it's a lot weaker. The problem isn't just the internet or social media. The internet and how bad it is now is only symptomatic of a society shaped by power, money, and exploitation. The internet's an integral part of that society now. It can only change for the better if the broader political landscape changes to be more egalitarian. Maybe if we started... Yo, Manon? Oh. Ugh. Politics? Hard. You lost me at... Capitalism. You gotta remember to keep Love Web simple to understand. This is a show for all ages after all. Uh, yeah, right. Can't forget about the 14-year-olds who make up most of our audience. I really hope viewers are going to be interested in the web revival movement and not feel intimidated by it. Wait, I forgot! I wanted to show you something on my own website that I'm making. Look! I made pages all about us! Not bad. I expected something flashier and more obnoxious. Hmm... Uh... For my description, I think I'll take care of it myself, okay? Alright! The website is also gonna have a dedicated page for web revival and personal websites. I'll have links on there to start your journey into the personal web! I hope you enjoyed this episode of Love Web, and don't forget to support us on Patreon or buy some merch! Anyway, thank you for watching and see you on the personal web! Lol!